So number seven and eight are grid drawing exercises. And some of you might be familiar with this and some of you may not. Some of you might not have done this for quite some time. So what you do with the grid drawing, and this is a really great technique for trying to copy or transfer something, is you draw a grid over the image you're trying to copy and then you draw a grid on your final paper. And then what you do is you go square by square or intersection by intersection to help guide you to draw your thing. So for Mickey, I would probably start kind of with this ear and I would see that this curved line starts in A1, so square A1, and I would be like, is this the right curve? No, it's way too big, isn't it? So I'm using that square as a guide to how big that curve is. And it crisscrosses right around here on that line. And then I need to figure out this curve here. The way I do that is say, where does it intersect right here? It intersects right there. So then I kind of make my curve match and kind of come down. So I'm using these grid lines as a guide for where to draw. And if you ever are drawing and you're like, this doesn't look right, try and cross check and say, okay, where does this head start and end? It starts it's out right here and then it comes over and it crisscrosses in before it even hits D. It's crisscrossing over. Some students really love this way of drawing. I personally use it if I'm trying to draw a person because it can help me draw a person so it looks actually like the person and not like kind of like the person. Oops, look at that, I messed up already. Making these eyeballs too big. I think I was looking up here at this one. Got confused. There we go, that's more like it. And then his little peak right there. Time where I see students mess up with this is when they stop using the grid and they just start to try and draw it without using the grid. And that's usually pretty obvious because they'll be like way, parts will be way off and way askew from other parts. So then you would do the same thing down here for Bugs Bunny. And then when you switch to the next page, it gets even harder, and that's where this grid is actually smaller than this grid. So you're not only gonna have to copy, but you're also going to have to enlarge it to make it fit that new grid. But you get the idea. So that's the end of your sketchbook.